Hey guys, how are you? Great. Hi. Hey, what's up? Good to see you. That's a great. Great to see you guys. So we're here together to um, kind of share some news, important news about an upcoming workshop with the Plain Air Painters of America. And the workshop is going to be February 20th to the 24th. And it's going to be at the exciting uh, Booth Museum through their Booth Art Academy. And uh, we're basically pushing this so far in advance because we need to get uh, the registration cut off is December time. So we want to get this out early enough so people uh, can make plans to uh, check it out. And it's going to be a, an exciting time. You know, uh, uh, Papa is, has a legacy, a long legacy of teaching plein air and, and really keeping the legacy of painting from life uh, in the forefront. And we every year we have what we call Papa Week, which is where we have instructors share our knowledge and, and have a time to paint um, in certain locations around the country. And so this year we have uh, the Booth Museum, and it's actually in conjunction with the Booth, um, or I'm sorry, the Papa uh, exhibit that will be happening there from August through, fe pe through February. So uh, the group members will have uh, work displayed in the museum. And with this opportunity, we have a chance to uh, present a workshop that's also in conjunction with their um, 20th, um, I think it's called the Western Art History Symposium. So there'll be lots of activity on this at the museum, trying to you know use this 20th annual uh, symposium. So anyway, it's all part of it. And we just wanna share uh, uh, a little bit about ourselves and about the format that we as uh, Papa present to the students. It's a little bit different than your, than your typical um, plein air workshop. So before we do that and talk about that, I'd like to introduce uh, some of the members and I'll let Dave start. Hey folks, my name is Dave Sanianis. Um, I'm from Wellington, Colorado, and I'm here in my studio right now. Um, I've been painting outdoors, plein air painting for approximately 25 years. And, you know, whether we, you know, end up in the studio at workshops or outdoors, I always teach with the same uh, plein air concepts. So it's, it's plein air concepts that, that really guide me in any painting that I do. Um, you know, I, I was lucky enough, I taught at the booth last spring. It's an awesome place to teach. It's an awesome place to learn. And we're just down the street from the booth museum itself. So um, there's no shortage of inspiration there. Um, so, um, and, and I can talk a little bit too about just, you know, kind of what I teach in, in, in the format but generally I like to start workshops with a slideshow, which kind of gets everyone on the same page. Um, we start talking, you know, speaking the same language and um, really it, it covers color relationships and how to see color in the landscape and translate that into pigment, um, which I think is vital as an artist. Uh, learning to see in terms of pigment is much different than, you know, seeing as a, uh, a tourist passing by a scene. So, so that's really the focus of, of my presentation. And, you know, everything for me um, is based on how to, you know, how colors relate to each other in the landscape. And I um, wrap that around creating atmosphere in your work. Hi, I'm Ned Mueller. Uh, good to be here. I'm humbled to be here with this great uh, array of artists here. Um, uh, I guess I'm the senior fellow here. Uh, I've been painting, drawing for God since I was four years old and I'm 82 now. So I'd, uh, I'd like to think I have a little biz, bit of wisdom to add. Um, so I, I kind of stress and I do a lot of things. I do portraits, I do figures and landscapes. But what I like to do is a definition of a good painting. And I was a teacher always looking for words to say something. And I, it's not perfect, but it's a pretty good idea. A good or compelling painting is a interesting or compelling arrangements of shapes, colors, edges, and textures. And I like to stress the principles and elements of design. So I'll be covering a lot of that. Um, 
emphasizing that aspect of it uh, because that definition applies to abstract, classical, traditional, impressionistic when you think about it. So again, I'll be teaching and I have a kind of workshop that I like the most called the art of seeing because all of this whole process is learning how to see. And that's improving your judgment, your taste. And it all involves all the principles of drawing, design, color, all that. Trying to make a work of art, even if you're doing a little sketch. But uh, I know the design principles are mostly probably better instructed in studio. But the thing is, those things, if you apply them and you know about them, will improve your paintings. And so I encourage people to even do little quick value studies, even on location, something to get your idea down. Saves you a lot of trouble, cuts out a lot of clunkers. So that's kind of the direction I'll be going, and I'm really looking forward to it. That's great. I can't, uh, I agree wholeheartedly. Hello, everyone. My name is Kyle Ma. I've been painting for the past 12 years. So when I teach, I like to really emphasize the fundamentals, um, particularly in for my presentation, I would like to talk about the way light interacts with objects. I'll go into a little bit of the science behind um, how light interacts with the atmosphere and how the how it falls on different objects and how that can relate to different concepts on like on edge work, um, on value, and how to make things look more three-dimensional. And we can relate that to examples of paintings by the old masters. So I look forward to seeing you all and working with you. So uh, anybody know me, I'm Mitch Baird. Um, I'm actually current uh, president of PAPA. Uh, and we, like I said, we, we do this every year and I'm excited to, to not only um, paint with these guys, these gentlemen, but to see the booth uh, for the first time, I think there's gonna be some time for us to uh, visit the museum, analyze some of the great work there and learn from the masters before us uh, that taught us uh, uh, how, to, how to see and, and, and how to paint. Uh, it's I ironic that Ned and I will be teaching together and we'll talk about this, uh, how, we, how we break this uh, workshop down. But I too am coming from the, the, the concept of perception, learning to see it is, as an artist, learning to perceive and, and see is what's gonna help you grow as a painter to understand the visual um, you know, keys and the visual tools to take this three-dimensional thing and put it on a two-dimensional canvas. With, this, with our format that we're gonna be doing, it, it, the way this workshop is set up is the first day we have an opening lecture. And the opening lectures Basically, it's a day where we, we as each of us present our ideas or our lecture to you to kind of give you some type of insight. And it could be, sounds like we got, got a little bit of gist of some of the, some of the um, ideas that will be presented. And so the first day will be a lecture. And then the following uh, uh, four days will be four days of instruction, but we team teach. So you'll have two instructors, Ned and I will be together, and then Kyle and Dave will be together. So we have, you have two sets. In the first two days, you'll have one set of instructors. And then the class, the split class will swap. And you'll have the other two instructors for two days. And we think this is a valuable setup. And, you know, we don't find it anywhere else out there uh, being taught through this way. But it allows you to get um, two viewpoints working with, with an instructor. Obviously, we're all pretty much on the same page because we are co covering fundamentals. But it's funny how, how we can learn just through the way someone presents it. We may be saying the same thing, but I may say it a little bit different, which will connect with a student. And maybe Ned will say it a little bit different, which will connect with the other student. So we think it's a very valuable um, format for people to learn uh, you know, in this team teaching in scenario. So anyway, that's, that's kind of how the, the, the uh, workshop will go and we'll usually start in the mornings with a demo 
Uh, so each the two artists will demo and the students can walk between the two the two teachers and watch and ask questions about the process. And then we'll take a, you know, obviously a lunch break and then we'll paint in the afternoons where each of us will kind of start at two ends of the group and work our way back and forth, helping um, you throughout the process. So uh, and we've, we've, been, uh, we've been open to actually do, uh, let the students paint in the morning and us demo in the afternoon. We're kind of here for, for you, the student. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd present that, but my lecture is on perception, as I mentioned, it's learning to see. And I'll cover um, really how we see as artists or how we need to relearn how to see as artists to break uh, these things down into not only fundamental design concepts, but actually visually how we should be using our eye uh, as a tool to see what's in front of us and analyze and figure out how these things coincide, how value and color work together, obviously atmospheric perspective. Those things are obviously crucial when we're working from life. And you know, as Dave mentioned, whether you're in the studio or working from life, the concept is the same. We're trying to represent how light falls on form. And the reason why we go outside is not just to get a plein air painting, but to actually learn um, and, and perceive what's there so that when we come back to the studio, we can get the truth. We have the truth in front of us when we work from life. Um, so anyway, that's what my lecture will be about. And I'm excited to share it. It's kind of fun to have some fun anecdotes in there, uh, as well as some very informative um, information. Let's jump back over to Dave. Uh, Dave, you want to talk about your lecture? Yeah. Um, so mine's called Introduction to Color Relationships and, and How to Capture Atmosphere in, in a Landscape. And so I, as the title mentions, I'm wrapping the entire discussion of color relationships around creating more atmosphere in your work. Um, I think that's what my work's um, probably known for more than anything. So I figured why not talk about it in relation to that. So, um, you know, it, it's got lots of visual, I mean, let's face it, we're artists, we don't like to see a lot of words on slides. So I didn't put a lot of words on any slides, it's all visual. It kind of takes you through different examples of how you can change a color simply by changing colors around that color. Um, so it really opens up, you know, hopefully um, a, a lot more avenues to using color. And I think Amy gave me a standing ovation at one point in my life. <laughs> I think she did. I think she did. But if she didn't, she probably wanted to. She should have. That's, she should that's have. just because you're so good looking, Dave. <laughs> yeah, that's the, not those icy blue that's eyes. Right. Is what it is. <laughs> you're gonna find two. To you. <laughs> you're gonna find two folks that we we love to banter. We love to have fun. There's there's this 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 uh, craft of art has a lot of serious concepts, and I think the way we fumble through it is to find humor in some things. So, with all this great information we're sharing, we're gonna have some laughs as well because we find it uh, important to laugh our way through this bumbling thing <laughs> called art. So, with that, Ned, how about you start in because you're always got a chuckle. Well, I kind of covered a little bit what I talked before, but mainly I'm going to stress design. You know, the interesting arrangements of shapes, colors, um, edges, and, and texture. And um, it's hard to explain what design is, but there are certain things, you know, that we apply the principles, if you know the principles, and elements of design, overlaps, tangents, spacing, all of that stuff, you apply that to your paintings, it's gonna make them better. Now, the problem there is, it's kind of like golf or tennis. You learn all these steps and everything and you, you go through them piece by piece by piece. But then if you think your way all, all through that, it's gonna be awkward. So what you want to do is learn that stuff and then just let it happen. And um, so, but I think we, it's important to know those things and then we can apply them, particularly to plain air where it's more spontaneous. But I'm going to stress that and also how we can apply that to our paintings uh, just by getting some of our ideas or thoughts 
down just on a little notebook and go from there. So I'll be lecturing mostly on that. And I think it's be, I think it'll be very helpful. Great. How about you, Kyle? Well, my lecture is mainly going to be talking about understanding light and form. So for example, we can conceptualize a sphere and we can break it down into parts starting with light and a shadow. And then I will be breaking it down further into talking about what's the form shadow, what's the, the highlight, the cast shadow. And then we will tie it together with an understanding concepts such as edges, knowing where and why we might see a hard edge versus a soft edge, and then understanding um, value compression. And so we can then tie it to and paint paintings from the old masters who came before us who understood these concepts and we can see how they ap applied these ideas of form to their painting to make it look more three-dimensional. Yeah, I think it's gonna be exciting to have the museum because I think with what you're saying and I think with the rest of us is we can actually go and look at some of these old masters and show, look, here's that principle right there. They're applying it and that's why this painting is so great and it's hanging in a museum because they're using these fundamental principles, right, as painters. And so I think that's gonna be a, a real bonus to have this workshop at the Booth Museum. And I'm really excited to uh, be a part of it. So uh, for information, for those of you who want to check it out, you can go to uh, plannerpaintersofamerica.com website and under workshops, you'll find under that link um, a, a more information link, which will take you to the booth, or you can go to the boothmuseum.org website. And there it's a little longer. You got to go to learn. And I believe you go down to the booth Academy and then under booth Academy's adult classes. And you'll find that link in there for, for registration. So remember though, the registration, I think the closing date sometime in December. So, uh, that's why we're pushing this so early to get so people can be informed and know that it's out there and that the registration, you know, cuts off a few months before. So uh, with that, I hope you'll uh, look at uh, learning from Papa and, and enjoying some time and, and educational uh, time with us. And uh, hopefully we'll make it worth your while and we'll have a lot of fun. So with that, I'd like to say thank you guys for coming on and, and having a, a fun chat. We'll, we'll share this online and Hopefully the people can get to know a little bit more about us individually and about Papa.